You are an emergency doctor working at your local hospital. One of the patients that you're treating is 16 years old and they are a Jehovah's Witness. Their parents are refusing the life-saving blood transfusion that can occur and the patient themselves who's 16 years old would like to have the treatment. What are the ethical implications in this scenario and what would you do? It's quite a, a difficult scenario because of course there's uh, quite significant contrasts of opinions and um, it's a there, there may be a potential option where you need to contradict the parents and so to uh, comprehensively answer the question I'll look at the principles of medical ethics so from a beneficence point of view we're trying to do as much good as possible um, you can argue that actually it would be best to refuse the directions of the parents and carry out the life-saving uh, treatment because of course you're going to be saving someone's life. And again, the same thing uh, would likely arise from a non maleficence point of view because you're reducing potential future harm to the patient. But at that point, you're also coming at the cost of autonomy. So you're, you're um, preventing the autonomy of the parents, which it is in fact their right to make a decision uh, for their child um, and again relevant related to, to justice if it may be that if you fail to uh, provide treatment to this patient now they might need even greater treatment in the future which might take treatment away and so we kind of progress to the next point where we kind of need to determine the capacity of the patient themselves to make a decision. Now, under uh, current law, um, parents usually make the decisions for their children because the children are still considered um, lacking capacity to make a decision. But in this case, it may be useful to assess the capacity of the patient. We've got the example of giving competence as a way of assessing it to see if they're fully aware of the implications of their treatment. And then once that uh, capacity has been fully uh, assessed and fully decided, if the patient themselves would prefer the treatment, then it would make sense to go ahead with it. Having said that, it's very important to try and minimise conflict within the family. And so before taking any radical steps, I would try and contact a hospital uh, liaison or someone who is particularly uh, experienced with dealing with Jehovah's Witnesses cases to give me further advice and to also determine how best to act. This is an example of a great answer because the student talks about the four pillars of medical ethics, autonomy, beneficence, non-maleficence and justice. The student also talks about the professional, legal and moral responsibility of doctors and all healthcare professionals to always work in a patient's best interest. The student also addresses the issue of capacity and the conflict of interest that exists between the patient and their parents. This student presents a very balanced answer and a balanced viewpoint exploring both sides of the argument, that is looking at the parents' wishes versus looking at the patient's wishes. The student also addresses the tension that exists within the family and talks about how they would try to reduce that as much as possible. And lastly, the student also talks about bringing in an expert, the medical liaison, to reduce these tensions as much as possible and to guide the student on next steps. You are an a and &E doctor at your local hospital. One of your patients is 16 years old and is a Jehovah's Witness and is in genuine need of a life-saving blood transfusion. They would like to have the procedure, but their parents refuse uh, their son to have it. What would you do in such a situation? What are the ethical implications to this? So again, this is quite a difficult situation. because We've got a scenario where the demands of the patient or the patient's parents contradict uh, that of the doctor. But we as doctors, um, when, when we train, uh, take an oath to save life at, at all costs. And it is almost our duty to make sure that we benefit the patients um, and that we ensure that um, patients recover and do well, even if they themselves aren't fully aware of the implications of, of their decisions. And so in this case, um, I would actually contradict 
uh, what the patients want to do or decide to do, um, and order treatment straight away. Um, and I would actually do that for a number of reasons. Firstly, this is probably a case where quick treatment is essential for survival. Um, secondly, at the end of the day, um, it might be that they're going to change their mind anyway, and so they, they'd probably be wasting hospital resources if we don't do quite a quick um, blood transfusion transfer. Um, and thirdly, I don't think the parents are fully aware of what it actually means to lose their child, um, even if it's for their religion. Um, and probably may, maybe they, they're not fully aware of all the technicalities of their faith in that particular area. And so it might be a situation where actually we can save the, the child's life and then they can um, research the implications or, or what, the, what, the, the exact, what their exact faith tells them um, and move that forward. So in conclusion, I do think as doctors we have a responsibility to save life, um, even if patients themselves aren't fully aware of the implications of their treatments. This is an example of a bad answer because the student provides a very one-sided view on a very complicated ethical issue. The student makes no mention of the pillars of medical ethics and makes a lot of decisions based on biased assumptions against the parents, such as they may not know the technicalities of their faith and that the parents are likely to change their mind in the end anyway. There was also no mention of the issue of capacity or any conflict of interest. So a bit more on Jehovah's Witnesses now. Jehovah's Witnesses are a Christian denomination that refuse blood transfusion because they consider it a violation of God's law. And Jehovah's Witnesses have been a topic of discussion in the medical ethics community for a long time now. Because what do we as doctors and healthcare professionals do when our patient has capacity but refuses a life-saving treatment? So first, what is capacity? A person is said to have capacity if they can understand the information given to them by a healthcare professional and can process this information so they can analyse the pros and cons of a particular treatment, for example, and can then communicate a decision back to the healthcare professional. So if an adult has capacity and refuses a life-saving treatment such as a blood transfusion, then they are well within their rights to make this decision because patients have autonomy. So they have the right to make their own decisions about treatment, even if it's a life-threatening situation. So if an adult, if a Jehovah's Witness adult, has capacity and makes the decision to refuse a blood transfusion, that is completely acceptable. But what if this adult does not have capacity? Usually, Jehovah's Witnesses carry an advanced directive with them, which is just a piece of writing that identifies them as a Jehovah's Witness and states that they would not be accepting blood um, even in a life-threatening situation. In an alternate scenario, the doctors can also gain consent from a family member or relatives and that is known as proxy consent. The situation gets a little tricky when we think about children because parents and family members should not impose their religious beliefs on their children and children often lack the capacity to make their own decisions. The same issue can apply to adults as well. Their family and relatives should not be imposing religious beliefs on them, which is why it is very important to have discussions on blood transfusion transfusions with a competent adult in private so that their decision is not influenced by family or relatives or friends. Recently, however, cell-free blood products containing hemoglobin but not red blood cells have been made available and this may be acceptable to some Jehovah's Witnesses. This is why it's really important to have a conversation with your patient if they're a Jehovah's Witness and ask them what type of blood products they're okay with, if any. Jehovah's Witness hospital liaison committees also exist in most hospitals now and they maintain a list of doctors who can be consulted with a view of treatment without the use of blood. This has eased many tensions in a lot of situations regarding Jehovah's Witnesses and blood transfusions. Our one-to-one -one online interview tutor offers a tailor-made service personalised to your specific universities and medicine interviews including MMI, Panel and Oxbridge. Our expert tutors will enable you to articulate yourself, practice mock interview questions, as well as receive extensive feedback on your performance. You will also gain access to our online interview course with over 150 tutorials and over 200 exemplar answers.